This video will cover populations and inferences, sampling error, and the central limit theorem. A population is the set of all members about which a study intends to make inferences. Here's a population of people. We'd like to study their television watching behavior to determine how many watch a particular show so we can decide whether to purchase advertising spots during this period of time. But our population is much too large for a feasible study. To study their television viewing habits, we will have to survey them, and it's not feasible to survey every single individual. So instead, we'll take a sample of the population to study. Choosing a representative sample, we can make some inferences about the population behavior. But it's unlikely that one sample can provide accurate measures of behavior for the entire population. An estimate of the population parameter, or the proportion watching a television show, is likely to be different for different samples of the same size, and is likely to be different from the population parameter. This is called sampling error. The sampling error is unknown, but we can estimate the extent of this error by applying the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem tells us that what we know about our sample can tell us about the larger population the sample came from. For any results that are generated from samples, we get a range of estimates of a population parameter, which includes mean and standard deviation, from each sample. In our example, it would be an estimate of the proportion watching a particular TV show. These estimates have their own distribution, and the central limit theorem tells us that the distribution looks like a bell curve. The central limit theorem makes predicting outcomes a lot easier. If the sample size is large enough, then the sampling distribution of the mean is approximately normally distributed, regardless of the distribution of the population. If all possible random samples, each of size n, are taken from any population with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, the sampling distribution of the sample means, or averages, will have a mean, have a standard deviation, and be approximately normally distributed, regardless of the shape of the parent population. Remember that normality improves with a larger n, and it all comes back to z. Note the symbols here. The mean of the sample means is noted as mu of x-bar. The standard deviation of the sample means is written as sigma of x-bar, and is also called the standard error of the sample mean. That concludes our video. Today we covered populations and inferences, sampling error, and the central limit theorem.